Hi. Now in this question, we're given the function f, which is defined for all real values of x by f of x equaling 2x plus 5. And the function g is defined for all real values of x, and is such that the inverse function of g of x equals the cube root of x minus a, where a is a constant. And it is given that fg to the minus 1 of 12 equals 9. And what we've got to do is find the value of a and hence solve the equation gf of x equals 68. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Now, first of all then, if we've got to find the value of a, I'm going to work off the result that we're given here. That is fg of minus 1 of 12 equals 9. So we'll just put this down here that we're given this result. So given that f combined with the inverse function of g, when x equals 12, it gives us 9. So working on this left hand side here, we've therefore got f combined with the inverse function of g when we put x equals 12 in. And if we put 12 in to the inverse function of g, we get the cube root of 12 minus a. So we've got here then the cube root of 12 minus a. And we know that this equals 9. Now, wherever we've got an x in f of x, we replace it with the cube root of 12 minus a. So f of x is 2x plus 5, so we're therefore going to have 2 multiplied by x, but it's replaced, as I say, with the cube root of 12 minus a. 12 minus a. And then plus 5 and that equals 9. Now, I'll take you slowly through here. I'm sure you could jump a few steps, but I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, so that gives me 2 multiplied by the cube root, then, of 12 minus a, and that equals 9 take away 5, which is 4. And if I divide both sides by 2, I get the cube root, then, of 12 minus a equals 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And then I'm going to cube both sides, and I get 12 minus a equals 2 cubed, which is 8. And then I can see that if I rearrange this by adding a to both sides and subtracting 8 from both sides, a equals 4. All right? So that's the first part, then, getting a. Now, the next part, it says, and hence solve the equation gf of x equals 68. You might, in fact, want to just pause the video at this stage if you feel now that uh, you've got a and you didn't have it before and just want to carry on. So just give you a moment then just to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then. Let's just carry on with this. Now, we've got to solve the equation g of f f of x equals 68. And there's two ways we can actually do this. There's the very quick way, which I'm going to do first, and there's the slower method afterwards. But we'll take gf of x, okay? gf of x, we're told, equals 68. Now what I'm going to do is take the inverse function of g to both sides of my equation. So what I'm going to have is g to the minus 1 of g of f of x, okay, has to equal the inverse function of 68. So I've taken the inverse function of g of x to both sides of my equation here. Now when you take an inverse function, when you combine these two functions together, they essentially give us what is called the identity. They kind of cancel one another out. And you're therefore left with just f of x. f of x 
will equal the inverse function of g of 68. So all I've got to do is substitute x equals 68 into here, and I get the cube root of 68 minus a. But I now know that a is 4. Okay? So what we've got then is therefore f of x must be equal to the cube root of 64. And the cube root of 64 is 4. So what I've got then is that f of x, which is 2x plus 5, must be equal to the 4. Nice simple equation to solve. So what I've got to do now is subtract 5 from both sides, and I get 2x equals 4 minus 5, which is minus 1. Divide both sides by 2, and I end up with x equaling minus a half. So a nice quick way, I feel, of doing that question. But I did say there was another way of doing it, and this most probably is the method that will appeal to most people. And that is that we're going to find out what g of x is, given the inverse function here, so that we can apply it in this combined function equation here. So to find g of x, what I'm going to do is just say let x equal x in place of the inverse function of g of x. And wherever I've got an x here, I'm going to replace it with a y. So I've got the root, the cube root, I should say, of x minus a. The x is replaced with a y, so you get y minus, and the a is 4. And what I've got to do now is just rearrange this equation to make y the subject. y will re represent g of x. So I'm going to cube both sides of the equation, so I therefore get x cubed equals y minus 4. And then, just by adding 4 to both sides, I therefore have y equals x cubed plus 4. And that means that y represents g of x, and it equals x cubed plus 4. So therefore, knowing that g of f of x equals 68, let's just find g f of x first of all. So I can say g of f of x is going to equal g of, and f of x is 2x plus 5. And what I do now is replace any x in g of x with 2x plus 5. And so what that gives me is 2x plus 5 all cubed, 2x plus 5 all cubed, and then plus the 4. Now I know that g f of x equals 68. So let's just put since g f of x equals 68, then we've therefore got that this must equal 68. So we've got therefore 2x plus 5 all cubed plus the 4 is going to equal 68. And from this, I can subtract 4 from both sides. That's going to give me 2x plus 5. Okay, 2x plus 5, all cubed, is going to equal 68 take 4, which is 64. And if I take the cube root of both sides, I therefore have 2x plus 5 equals the cube root of 64, which is 4. And we saw that equation up here, 2x plus 5 equals 4, which led to x equals minus a half. So therefore, by this method, obviously we would expect the same answer, and it is x equals minus a half. So whatever method you choose, hopefully you're able to see how you get 2x equals minus a half.